Shabbat Shalom boys and girls. My name is Miss Megan and I am so excited to be here with you today. Did you have a good weekend? I know I did. This past weekend we went to see some family that I haven't seen in so long and I really miss them. There was lots of food and lots of fun and lots and lots of laughter. I really, really love to laugh. I love funny jokes. I just love being around people who make me smile and it makes me feel good. But did you know that there's different types of laughter? Think about it for a minute. You've got your funny laughter, right? You have, maybe, maybe you laugh when you're nervous. There's nervous laughter. Or maybe, maybe you laugh when you have a situation like Abraham did. Remember, we learned about Abraham last week and we learned that when Yah came to him and started to set his covenant with him, he laughed. In his heart, he laughed and he could not believe what Yah was promising him, that he would have a child, that Sarah would bring forth a child in, in their old age. And it was inconceivable to them how that would even work. But you know what? Yahweh keeps his promises, doesn't he? Never once has he ever, ever, ever given up on one of his promises. And that's pretty amazing. So let's find out what happens this week. We're going to have our opening prayer. We're going to have a song. We're going to learn our scripture story today. And then we're going to have a nature lesson. And I'll see you back soon. All right. Shabbat Shalom, everybody. This is another special week on Trained Up in Torah where we have viewers like you who have sent in them playing their shofar. And so I hope you enjoy as we sound off starting our Sabbath lesson and as we close. Shabbat Shalom. Heavenly Father, thank you for this wonderful day that you've made, and we thank you for another Shabbat that you've brought us to, for everyone that's here, and we pray you bless each one that's watching and learning of your ways and of your Torah, and we pray you would bless us and you, you would be with each one in a special way. We love you and thank you. In Yeshua's precious name, Amen. Shabbat Shalom. I have another song I'd like to share with you, and this is a song that I wrote uh, from the perspective of Sarah, who is Abraham's wife, and that's when she heard that she was going to have a baby. Just as y'all 
Shabbat Shalom. Bereshith, or Genesis 18. And Yahuwah appeared unto him in the plains of Mamre, and he sat in the tent door in the heat of the day. And he lift up his eyes and looked, and lo, three men stood by him. And when he saw them, he ran to meet them from the tent door, and bowed himself toward the ground, and said, Yahuwah, if now I have found favor in your sight, pass not away, I pray you, from your servant. Let a little water, I pray you, be fetched, and wash your feet, and rest yourselves under the tree. And I will fetch a morsel of bread, and comfort ye your hearts. After that ye shall pass on, for therefore are ye come to your servant. And they said, So do as you have said. And Avraham hastened into the tent unto El Sarah, and said, Make ready quickly three measures of fine meal, knead it, and make cakes upon the hearth. And Avraham ran unto the herd, and fetched a calf tender and good, and gave it unto a young man, and he hastened to dress it. And he took butter and milk, and the calf which he had dressed, and set it before them. And he stood by them under the tree, and they did eat. And they said unto him, Where is Sarah your woman? And he said, Behold, in the tent. And he said, I will certainly return unto you according to the time of life. And lo, Sarah, your woman, shall have a son. And Sarah heard it in the tent door which was behind him. Now Avraham and Sarah were old and well stricken in age, and it ceased to be with Sarah after the manner of women. Therefore Sarah laughed within herself, saying, After I am waxed old, shall I have pleasure, my Adonai being old also? And Yahuwah said unto El Avraham, Wherefore did Sarah laugh, saying, Shall I of surety bear a child, which am old? Is anything too hard for Yahuwah? At the time appointed I will return unto you, according to the time of life, and Sarah shall have a son. Then Sarah denied, saying, I laugh not, for she was afraid. And he said, Nay, but you did laugh. And the men rose up from thence and looked towards Sedom, and Avraham went with them to bring them on the way. And Yahuwah said, Shall I hide from Avraham that thing which I do, seeing that Avraham shall surely become a great and mighty nation, and all the nations of the earth shall be blessed in him? For I know him, that he will command his children and his household after him, and they shall guard the way of Yahuwah to do justice and judgment, that Yahuwah may bring upon Avraham at that which he has spoken of him. And Yahuwah said, Because the cry of Sedom and Amorah is great, and because their sin is very grievous, I will go down now and see whether they have done altogether according to the cry of it, which is come unto me, and if not, I will know. And the men turned their faces from thence, and went towards Sedom. But Avraham stood yet before Yahuwah. And Avraham drew near, and said, Will you also destroy the righteous with the wicked? Perchance there be fifty righteous within the city. Will you also destroy and not spare the place for the fifty righteous that are therein? That be far from you to do after this manner, to slay the righteous with the wicked. And that the righteous should be as the wicked, that be far from you. Shall not the judge of all the earth do right? And Yahuwah said, If I find in Sedem fifty righteous within the city, then I will spare all the place for their sakes. And Avraham answered and said, Behold, now I have taken upon me to speak in Yahuwah, which am but dust and ashes. Perchance there shall lack five of the fifty righteous? Will you destroy all the city for lack of five? And he said, If I find there forty and five, I will not destroy it. And he spoke unto him yet again, and said, Perchance there shall be forty found there? And he said, I will not do it for forty's sake. And he said unto him, O oh, let not Yahuwah be angry, and I will speak. Perchance there shall be thirty found there? And he said, I will not do it if I find thirty there. And he said, Behold now, I have taken upon me to speak unto Yahuwah. 
Perchance there shall be twenty found there? And he said, I will not destroy it for twenty's sake. And he said, O oh, let not Yahuwah be angry, and I will speak yet but this once. Perchance ten shall be found there. And he said, I will not destroy it for ten's sake. And Yahuwah went his way as soon as he had left communing with El Avraham. And Avraham returned unto his place. Shabbat Shalom. Miss Jessica here with today's nature lesson. As we know, Abraham had three visitors arrive in today's scripture from Bereshith, or Genesis chapter 18. In verse 1, we know it must have been a hot day because scripture tells us the visitors arrived while Abram was sitting in the tent door in the heat of the day. I don't know where you all live, but I live where it can get pretty hot during the summer months. Have you ever been outside on a really hot day? It's easy to get hot and sweaty. What were some ways that you cooled off? One of my favorite ways of cooling off is to sit under a tree that's offering some shade from the sun. Sometimes just stepping out of the sun's rays and stepping under a shade tree can cool us down a whole lot. Abram knew this too. In verse 4 he tells his visitors, Please let a little water be brought and wash your feet and rest yourselves under the tree. I'm guessing that Abram offered them to sit under the tree to have some relief from the sun shining on them while they rested. Have you ever rested in the shade before? Maybe it wasn't a tree, but under an umbrella, a tent, or awning. Maybe it was just going to the other side of a building where it was offering some shade while you played outside on a hot day. Didn't it feel so much better to get out of the direct sunshine when you were super duper hot? Sometimes, even our ducks and chickens like to find the shade on summer days to take a nap and rest in. Shade trees are another blessing from y'all that we sometimes forget about, and we're not very thankful for it until we need it or we use one. It's still a bit warm here where I live, and I'm very thankful for the trees in our yard that we can rest under when we get hot on a sunny day. Next time you're outside on a hot sunny day, find some shade and rest in it for a few minutes to see how it can help cool you down. Well, that's all of nature for today. I hope you have a blessed Shabbat. Shalom. Now, maybe you understand a little better where the name Isaac comes from. Isaac means laughter. Abraham laughed and Sarah laughed. They both had laughed at the thought of having a child in their old age. And that is where the name Isaac comes from. I think that's pretty neat. Do you know what else I think is pretty cool? Maybe you didn't notice, but do you know how long it would take to bake a loaf of bread and to get a calf and have it slaughtered and cooked up and brought to your table? I would think that that would take a couple hours at least, right? So Abraham's hanging out with Yah messengers for these couple of hours and I, I think that's really cool that they're just hanging out and getting to talk. I don't know what they would be talking about. I'm sure they could talk about anything. What do you think you would talk about if you were in Abraham's shoes in that moment? How cool is that, right? So then they start talking about Sodom and Gomorrah and that was not an easy one to discuss but we see here that despite them being such a sinful sinful city that Yahweh wants to save them. He promises Abraham that he would spare the city if he finds even ten that are walking in his ways. Ten righteous. He wants to show them mercy and grace despite their sinful ways. We know that Yahweh hates sin. He absolutely abhors it and we know that there's a consequence. So will Sodom and Gomorrah be saved? Will there be ten? Will he find ten righteous people in those cities? We're just going to have to find out. So let's move on and we're going to do our Hebrew, our history, and our moral story and have some more fun, okay? Sadiq. 
and Gimmel, Dolly, A and Bob and Zion, Chet and Tet and Yod and Kav, Lamit and Moon, Samak Ayin, Pay and Sadi, Kof and Reish, Zin and Sheen and Tav. Shalom, Chavarim. I pray you had an amazing week and that you are having a restful Shabbat with your family. I am excited to dive into this Hebrew lesson. Let's go, guys! So during today's lesson, I was thinking about how Abraham washed the feet of those who were coming to visit and how Sarah was preparing a delicious meal for her visitors as they came. And those same visitors, while they were there, told them a promise of them receiving a baby boy. While reading over this chapter this week, I thought that it would be best to go over some Hebrew words for different kinds of food. First, we're going to go over, I cook. And in the blank, you can put any word you desire for any type of food. I cook in Hebrew is Ani Mavashelet. A ni mavushelet. Say it with me one more time. A ni mavushelet. Awesome. The Hebrew word for soup is marak. Marak. What's your favorite type of soup? Mmm, that sounds delicious. My favorite kind of soup is tomato. Mmm, mmm, mmm. <laughs> One thing I really love with my soup is a good old piece of bread, whether it's a grilled cheese or some sort of roll or something to dip in the soup. So we're going to go over the Hebrew word for bread. The Hebrew word for bread is lechem. 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 You're doing great. The last word for today is cheese. Gavina. Gafina. Great. You guys did awesome today. So let's go see what they have in store for us. Shalom. This week for Hebrew, we have a special week. We're having actually two lessons this week. So hold on. Let's jump into the second one. Shabbat Shalom, everyone. My name is Matthew, and today I'm going to teach you some Hebrew from our story today. Abraham asks if the city will be destroyed if there are 50 righteous people found in it. Or 45? What about 40? Or 30? Or 20? In the end, Yah promises the city will not be destroyed if there are 10 righteous people in it. So today, we're going to learn the tens up to 50, along with numbers 1 to 5 in Hebrew, as well as some grammar relating to how to use these numbers. Let's start with numbers 1 through 5, but before we do, let me tell you something important about numbers in Hebrew. Numbers are adjectives which means they describe or tell you something about a noun. A noun can be a person, place, or thing. For example, one dog or two cats. The number is describing how many of something there are. Every noun in Hebrew has a gender, which is either masculine, like a male or boy, or feminine, like a female or girl. The numbers 1 to 10 in Hebrew look slightly different when they are attached to a masculine versus a feminine noun, since they must do something called a green, which means if you have a masculine noun, like boy, which is yelled in Hebrew, and wanted to say one boy, you would use the form of one that is masculine, and to say one girl, girl is yalda in Hebrew, you have to use the feminine form of one. But when you're just counting numbers, you always use the feminine form. So we're going to start with that. Are you ready? Let's go! One, a hot. Two, shtime. Three, shalosh. Four, araba. Five, chamesh. Now the masculine numbers. One, Echad, two, Shnaim, three, Shlosha, four, Arbaa, five, Chamisha. 
Now let's make some comparisons between the masculine and feminine numbers. For 1 and 2, we can see a toff has been exchanged for either a dalit or nun. And with numbers 3 to 5, you can see a hey has been added onto the end of the masculine numbers, which makes an ah sound. Now let's move on to the tens from 10 to 50. 10 is the only 10 in Hebrew that has a gender. The feminine form is eser, and the masculine form is asra. 20 is isrim, 30 is sloshim, 40 is arbaim, and 50 is hamishim. Note the similarity between 30, shloshim, and the masculine form of 3, shlosha. You just take out the ah and put in the im. The same is true for 40, arbaim, and the masculine form of 4, arba'a. And also, 50, hamishim, and the masculine form of 5, hamisha. Finally, before we review these numbers, here's some helpful and interesting information about them. First off, the number 3 is usually not spelled with a vav to make the O sound, but sometimes you will find that it is. This is a very common occurrence with the O vowel in Hebrew. Sometimes it will be spelled with a vav, sometimes it will not be. Now, 1 also works a little differently than the other numbers do when being used as an adjective. Instead of going before the noun, it goes after the noun. This is actually how most adjectives in Hebrew work, but the other numbers don't follow this pattern. Okay, finally, let's do a review by counting over all the numbers we've learned today. Let's start with the feminine forms of 1 through 5. First, I'm going to say the word in English, then in Hebrew, and then again in Hebrew to give you a chance to say it along with me, and then I'll give you a few seconds to say it by yourself. So again, we're starting with the feminine forms of 1 to 5. 1. Ahat. Ahat. 2. Shtaim. Shtaim. 3. Shalosh. Shalosh. 4. Arba. Arba. 5. Chamesh. Hamish. Now, the masculine forms of numbers 1 to 5. 1. Echad. Echad. 2. Shnaim. Shnaim. 3. Shlosha. Shlosha. 4. Arba'a. Arba'a. 5. Hamisha. Hamisha. Great job! Now let's review the tens from 10 to 50. Now remember, 10 has a masculine and feminine form. The feminine form of 10 is Eser. Eser. And the masculine form is Asra. Asra. Finally, 20 is Esrim. Esrim. 30 is Shloshim. Shloshim. 40 is Arbaim. Arbaim. And finally, 50 is Hamishim. Hamishim. Great job! Thank you for learning Hebrew numbers with me today. I hope you enjoyed it. If you'd like to have more practice with the tens we've learned today, look at a Hebrew text of Genesis 18, 23-33. I hope you all have a blessed week. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Miss Jessica here with today's history lesson. If you recall, Abraham served his three guests bread in today's scripture. Back then, Sarah didn't run to the store every time she needed bread. They baked their own. And each household usually made their own bread, so that means they had to mill and prepare the flour themselves as well. The first way recorded of milling was by using a mortar and pestle. Here's an example of what those looked like. They would grind the wheat up using this until it was a fine powder. This was hard work. 
Now in today's story, it says that Sarah was to make ready three measures of fine flour, knead it, and make cakes. We don't know for sure exactly what these cakes of bread look like, but my best guess is that they resembled something like the shape of a pancake. They would have likely been flat, round pieces of bread since the bread was to be prepared quickly. It's a bit confusing to understand exactly how much three measures of flour are by today's standards. But from what I've researched, it would equal quite a lot of flour today. So it seems that the guests Abraham fed were served a great feast once all of the meal was cooked and served. The bread was likely baked on top of hot stones, much like we cook in a pan on top of our stoves now. The dough would have been mixed with water and oil and kneaded well, then placed onto some stones to bake. Maybe they added some spices or herbs into the bread dough as well to give it more flavor. There are many different ways to enjoy bread. What's your favorite way to enjoy bread? In a loaf, a flat cake, fried, biscuits, maybe crackers. There are so many ways that we can enjoy bread. Maybe you and your family can make your favorite type of bread this week and talk about the scripture story we learned today while baking your bread. Shalom. What is Yah trying to teach us with the story of Abraham and his three visitors in Genesis 18? Hospitality. Abraham was known for his hospitality. Many believe that he would often sit in the door of his tent looking for people to help. He had a servant's heart. Even after just being circumcised, he ran to tell Sarah to make bread and ran to choose a calf and carried it to get it ready to serve his visitors, all while he was probably still in excruciating pain on a very hot day. Abraham lived his life for others. He put the needs of others before his own. Do you look for ways to be of help to your parents? Do you help your brothers, sisters, and friends? Do you share what's yours with them? Yah blessed Abraham abundantly. That means he blessed him a whole lot and gave Abraham everything he ever needed. If you give and take care of others with your things and with your time, he will bless you a whole lot too and give you everything you need. Faith. When Yahuwah told Abraham that Sarah would finally have a child, Sarah overheard and laughed inside her heart. Abraham was almost 100 years old after all, and Sarah was 90 years old. Sarah laughed because it seemed so unbelievable to her. Sarah lacked faith, even when Yah was right there, and Yah had to remind her, Is anything too hard for Yahuwah? What do you think? Is anything too difficult for Yah? No, that's right. Nothing is impossible for Yah. In fact, in the Bible, in Luke chapter 1, verse 37, it says, For with Elohim, nothing shall be impossible. We have to have faith that He will keep His promises because nothing is impossible for Him. Faith is believing without seeing. The next time you pray for something, believe that you have received it. If it is Yah's will for you to have it, then He will give it to you. Mercy Mercy is showing compassion or patience to someone that really doesn't deserve it because of the way they are treating you or someone else. It's easy to read the Bible and see Yah as a strong, powerful Elohim that punishes the wicked. And He is that. But it's important to recognize how merciful He really is. Why? Because when we recognize Yah's mercy, it helps us to become more merciful as well. When Abraham pleaded for the righteous people of Sodom and Gomorrah, Yah each time agreed to save those wicked cities. He would even have spared those cities if only ten righteous people could be found. Our Elohim, Yahuwah Sebaot, is a merciful Elohim that forgives us of our sins and has patience with even the worst sinners so that they have time to come to repentance and turn away from their sin. Are you merciful like our Elohim? Do you forgive those that hurt or upset you? Do you give them second chances? Do you want Yah to forgive you when you make mistakes? Yes, of course, and He does. Now I want to challenge you. 
The next time you are hurt or upset by someone, I want you to be merciful to them. If they say something mean, say something nice back. If they take something from you without asking, give them something else too. This will shock them. They will be overcome by the mercy of Yah in you. And many times it will change them for the better. Hospitality, faith, and mercy are some of the main things Yah is trying to teach us when we learn about the story of Abraham and his three visitors. We hope you practice hospitality, faith, and mercy at home this week. Shabbat Shalom! Wasn't that a great moral story? I mean, there's a lot we can learn from Abraham in that story. The hospitality and the faith he had and the mercy that Yah gave or that he was going to give. We'll have to find out more next week. But now I bet you're wondering, why, Miss Megan, are you holding a chicken? Well, you remember how I said that Sarah laughed? She didn't laugh because she thought it was funny. Maybe she didn't think it was funny that she was gonna have a baby in her 90s. But she probably laughed maybe out of nervousness, but she definitely thought that what Yah was promising her a son in her old age that that was absolutely crazy. Well, I'm holding a chicken because she's hurt, but I just had a Sarah moment. I did really, truly. While, while you were gone watching your moral story, I had a Sarah moment. Yesterday, we had this chicken. This is an adventure. And yesterday she got attacked by our neighbor's dog and it was an accident and we forgave our neighbor and her dog is a really sweet dog but she got attacked and her and her baby scurried to the woods we looked all night all night for her and we couldn't find her and we thought for sure that she didn't make it her chick uh her chick we found this morning she was over by the coop cold and she's doing so much better today but we thought that this mama hen didn't make it and so while you were watching your moral story, my kids came in here and they're yelling, Mom, Mom, we found adventure. And she comes hobbling up and they bring her in and she's got all this stuff that I had bandaged up so she's alive. And I laughed. I didn't laugh because it was funny. It's kind of a serious situation. But I laughed because I was in disbelief, total disbelief that as little as it seems, Yahweh saved our chicken. There's no way she should still be alive. It was really cold last night and and she's got an infection and she's tore up a lot, but she's alive and she walked back from wherever she was hiding. She walked a really long way. And I, I just laughed in disbelief. And so I kind of understand where Sarah came from, though it's a whole lot different than having a baby in your 90s. <laughs> I do have a joke for you though. Just one, because I like jokes. What do you call a cow with no legs? Ground beef. Okay, I'm done with the jokes. That was probably a really terrible one. If you can think of a good one, I'm sure your mom and dad would love to hear it right now. Now, you guys are gonna go have a song and a memory verse and some more fun. I think I'm going to put Adventure to bed after some more medicine so she can heal up. I hope you guys have an awesome time. Shabbat Shalom. Shalom. Let's pray and learn a new song together. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for your peace and your joy and your patience. We pray that you would help us to worship you with all of our hearts today.
Shabbat Shalom! This is Miss Shannon with another memory verse. Today, we have Hebrews 11, 11. Let's go ahead and read it. Through faith also, Sarah herself received strength to conceive seed, and was delivered of a child when she was past age, because she judged him faithful who had promised. Hebrews 11, 11. Alright, so that's the part of the video where you repeat after me. Here we go! Through faith also, Sarah herself received strength to conceive seed and was delivered of a child when she was past age. Because she judged him faithful, who had promised. Hebrews 11 11. Great job! Now, here's a quick note about the verse. We learned today that Sarah laughed when she heard Yah say that she was going to have a son. Have you ever laughed when you hear someone say something downright silly or just plain impossible? That's the kind of laugh Sarah was laughing. But the point I'm getting to is that even though Sarah doubted in the beginning, she had faith in the end, and that was what mattered. That was how she had a son in her old age, because she judged Yah faithful. So once again, here's your verse. Keep practicing it as much as you need. So that's your memory verse. Have a wonderful Shabbat and Shavuot Tov. Hey kids, I'm Ariel, and this is my mom Ashley. We're gonna make butter today. Isn't that fun? You can do it at home if you want to, because it's homemade. <laughs> yep, so everybody, uh, this week you know we are learning about Genesis chapter 18, and in the beginning of that, it talks about how um, the three men came and Abraham was at his tent door and he saw them and he ran to them and he said, please stay for a little while and let me feed you. I really, really want to do that. And he bowed himself to them and he knew it was Yahweh. And they said, okay, sure, that sounds good. And it says Abraham went and he got a goat and he got, what else did he get, Ariel? He got bread and curds. And curds, and what were the curds? Butter. Butter. And he got some milk too. Um, and he prepared this beautiful yummy meal for them to eat. And I looked it up and curds means butter. Butter. And I thought, what an awesome craft mixed with an activity, mixed with a snack. And and we could do all that mixed together in one if we made butter. Butter. So what do you need today for butter? Let's see. We need, what's this, Ariel? Creamer. We need some heavy whipping cream, unless by chance you've got some raw cow's milk or goat's milk. Goat's milk would be good butter. If you've got that, you can just scoop the cream off the top instead of using this. But I didn't have any of that today. So I just got some of this out of the fridge and it's the same as the cream you would scoop off the top of your raw milk. Yeah. So. We need that and two thirds cup. This is a two thirds cup. Okay, you need two thirds of a cup. Woo! And then you need a pint jar and a lid. So it'll go on top. Yeah, and then you shake it a bunch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, then we're gonna shake it a bunch. Now it takes forever but at the end mm, mm, you're gonna be so happy you did it it is delicious and we're gonna get some bread so me and mommy can eat it and that would be a great snack for you wouldn't it or maybe some crackers or mm. I know biscuits mm. butter on biscuits is good right mm. we don't have any so we're just gonna use bread just get some bread or the same thing okay so let's get started
put our lid on. And then. Put it on really tight, that way it doesn't spray out everywhere. Got it? Okay, now we're gonna begin the process of shaking it. So Oreo, you start to shake, shake, shake. And this is really fun, but hey, your arms might get tired. So the more people you have to shake it, the faster this is gonna go and the easier it's gonna be. I wonder if this is what Abraham's servants, or maybe even Sarah was doing in the tent, where they just shaking, shaking, shaking. What did they have to shake that, those curds? Oh, oh, they used a churner. Maybe they had churn? I don't know, but this is what we got. Let's shake it. <laughs> See? <laughs> okay, so me and Ariel have shook it and shook it and shook it and shook it for somewhere between five and ten minutes. That's about how long you have to shake it. So let's open it up now and see what it looks like. Okay, so here is our creation. You see that floating around in there? That's butter. That's butter. And the stuff on the outside of that, all that liquidy stuff, that's buttermilk. Mm. Some people love buttermilk. Some people don't. So what we'll do is we'll separate the buttermilk from the butter. That's almost just butter. Mm. You see how it's starting to look a lot more like butter now? It's yellow. We're gonna put it in the fridge, and when we get it back out, it'll be nice and hard and perfect. But right now, it's still perfect. You can eat it just like this, right when you're done. Smear it on some bread, smear it on some biscuits or some crackers, mm-mm, and have a yummy snack. We'll see you guys next week. Shalom. So, for this week's snack idea, you could have just made butter with Miss Ashley and you could make some homemade bread or maybe you could make some bread and have cheese with it if you don't have whipping cream. You can make some pita bread or all kinds of bread and you could put some honey or jelly or all kinds of things. Something else you could do is make homemade pizza. So you could have bread like Abraham had and you could put cheese, which curd could be cheese or butter. So you have your curd on it, have your favorite toppings, We'll have some recipes in the description of some pita bread, pizza, loaf bread, your choice. We'd love to see your pictures of your creation, and we hope you enjoy. Shabbat Shalom. Shalom! Shabbat Shalom, everyone! I'm Caitlin. Evelyn! And this is Evelyn! She is my firstborn. She's seven years old. I turned seven. Yes! I guess I'm seven. Yes. So, Evelyn's going to help us in closing prayer today. Evelyn, we're going to thank the Father for today's Shabbat, craft, and snack. Okay. And whatever else comes to your heart through the Ruach HaKodesh. Okay. Hit it, sister. Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for this meal. Thank you for craft time that we get a lot. Thank you for snack. Thank you for lunch and dinner and breakfast, Father. Thank you for providing for us and our families. And thank you for everything that you have given us. And thank you for blessing all of this family. Like, I don't mean like my family, but the whole world family. Thank you for blessing everyone with a beautiful life. And amen. In Yahushua's name we pray. Amen. amen. Oh, have a wonderful week. We'll see you guys next time. Bye. 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 We love you. We love you. Bye. Yeah, <laughs>